Hey everybody, Skylar here, and this is going to be a pretty quick episode of the collection. Um, clearly, I am not in the usual area of the house, I'm in my car on my way to the day job. Um, lots been going on the past few weeks. I got married, life is pretty good. Um, I have my new collection of videos that I've been shooting, but I am yet to have the time to edit them. So, for this, our tenth episode, we're actually going to look back at a couple of the locks that we've covered before. I know that with both the Emhart video and the Dom video, we weren't able to get a really nice shot of the pins. So I actually put them under the microscope last night so that you could see very clearly what was going on with them. So we're going to look a little bit at uh, those two past videos just to understand the concept again, and then we're going to look at the pins themselves. Let's dig in. Alright, so for the M heart, we understand the basic concept from the previous video. So we're just going to have a look at the third pin chamber with the key partially out of the lock. You're going to see that there are two pins interlocked with one another, and then when we push in fully, they're now all at the right height and the right rotation to decouple from one another. So the little tracks in the plug of the lock allow the tips of the driver pins to stay in place so they can recouple with the key pins when they come around. Now here is the bottom of the key coming around with its gaps cut out for the same reason. And now here are the key pins coming back into alignment. Pretty cool little lock. But here's a much closer look at what's actually happening inside. So here we have our two pins fully separated. You can see the tab sticking out of the driver pin, and you can see quite clearly not just the gap in the key pin, but also the shelf that really holds the two of them together. So it slides right in there. You can see really very clearly what level of machining and precision needs to go into creating these pins. They're not delicate by any means. It's actually a very strong system, but the precision has to be absolutely incredible. And here, of course, they are fully together, interlocked, ready to be put back into the lock and to stymie the next picker. Next up, we have our Dom, and what I really found fascinating in the Dom, of course, was that donut ring, but we're also going to look at one of the barrel-shaped driver pins, and we're going to uh, have a quick look at the key pin as well, because it's pretty interesting. And you're also probably going to see some marks on the key pin from where people have attempted to pick it at the different conferences I've been to. Um, yeah, so, we remember the basic concept, it's a dimple lock. Big problem with a lot of dimple locks is that because they're so little space to put your dimples in, you don't have a lot of variation between the pin stacks, and so a lot of them can be fairly easily raked with tools called matador picks. However, with the DOM, they've extended these ridges up above the thickness of the key, and that gives them a much wider range of pin differences. Okay, so having a look here, um, we have a nice straight line and this is also going to be mirrored by our pins, which are actually much narrower than you would imagine. And I'll show you how they do that when we pop it open, but first let's just have a look at what's going on inside. So, just like any normal pin tumbler lock, as the key is inserted, all of the pins are lifted up to the shear line, and they can separate. Each of the pins in the DOM is absolutely gorgeous. First, we're going to have a look at my favorite, that donut ring. Here with the donut ring, we have a free-floating ring sitting around the middle of a spool pin. And it's pretty self-explanatory, it's just very difficult to pick as a result of it sort of having similar properties to a serrated pin. And, and actually, if you look fairly low on the pin, you'll, you'll see that there is a small additional amount of material removed where it would confound picking even more. And then, of course, we have our barrel-shaped pins with a little bit of material taken off at the top and the bottom of those to further obfuscate picking. And here we have our um, key pin. Now, the key pin is neat because it's so narrow. You remember that it's riding on a very thin part of the key. 
And you can actually quite clearly see the scratch marks from where people have attempted to pick it. And of course it also has that big chunk taken out right before the top of the pin so that if you overlift this it'll get caught up and become incredibly difficult to make any additional progress with. Really beautiful pins. Just gonna take a quick peek inside one of our driver pins. This is that barrel pin, and this is a steel insert to make drilling more difficult, uh, make it much harder to drill your way through the shear line of this lock with these steel inserts in our driver pins. All right, that's it for this week. It was a quickie, little bit of a break for me for our 10th episode, but I will be back with many more videos. Um, coming up, we're gonna be looking at some awesome push le uh, lever locks. We're gonna look at those two ways with some salesman samples that I have from the mid 1800s. Uh, we're also going to have a in-depth look at the master lock speed lock, which is a very cool lock that my friend Michael Hubler did some incredible work on, so we're definitely gonna be cribbing some of his work on that. Thank you in advance, Michael. Um, and many more. I'm pretty excited to bust out some of the interesting Chinese locks that I've had kicking around for years. And uh, maybe finally start to get into some other combo stuff outside of that small postal lock. All right, thank you all so much for hanging with me with the collection. I've been really enjoying the series. And I hope that you all have as well. I know that many of you would like to see a little more picking information. Generally, that's not what we're going to be covering in the series. That said... Uh, one commenter, and I don't have your name in front of me right now, sorry, did make the point to me that I don't necessarily need to cover what it takes to pick these locks, but just explaining why the different features that I'm showing off increase the security of the lock. That's an incredible point. I'm sorry I haven't spent enough time on that previously. I will definitely be making a bigger effort in the future. Thank you all for all of the great feedback and again for enjoying the series, and I'll see you next week.